Hey, Vitalized Seed Guides. Um, I want to show you a uh, plot that I'm setting up. This is the first year uh, that I've got Vitalized in this. Uh, it's very sandy, very dry. It's almost, literally, it's almost beach sand. Uh, but um, I started the process uh, two seasons ago by trying to get some rye in here and I got some thatch down. I'm in here now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it's growing. I'm also doing a little work here. I got a scrape tree that I'm setting up and I got a stand right there in that tree. But as I'm doing this, I got the tractor running, keeping my voice down. Um, but I wanna show you this vitalized seed. It's the first season, it's coming in good. It's not super lush yet but the soil is gonna get better and better. Take a look. Okay, as I get down here, I'm seeing peas, different types of clover, uh, brassicas. If I look around here, I'm gonna see radishes. Uh, I got a little rye right here growing. Uh, I can see it coming up. And, uh, but you can see how this is filling in. And what's good about this is this is a carbon load and I've got some nice thatch down here and underneath there's the soil and that thatch is slowly gonna break down. So I'll come back in here. Uh, in the spring, I'll get Nitro Boost. It's about a quarter acre plot. I got a uh, rifle stand right here, big open field. I'm planting the edges and I'm starting the process. I'm just showing you some scenes of my farm. This is a seven acre south field that I got no food in here, but it grew up in this really nice thick grass because I disturbed it with my uh, disc. I just wanted to see what would happen. And uh, that's what happened, it grew up. So at some point I'd like to get some food in here. But for now, this is definitely great bedding. Now this is a stealthy way to check trail cameras, huh? Tidy hole food pot that I put down rye and clover. You can see the clover popping up down there. And the rye is gonna act as a nurse crop. If I wanted this for this fall, I probably could have put down a, a bunch more to thicken it up, but not too bad. I'm trying to get it set up. So I don't really even have to get off get off the tractor here's a scrape tree so I've got a camera on that blind right there looking at it I like to come down this edge I like to go down there that's where I shot that doe I had a stand right up in there this is my oat field that tree there. I see a lot of deer coming through here. Oats are looking really good. Lucy's at the scrape tree. They're definitely using this. Scrape down there. A lot of activity. I got a camera here. I'm going to move it. So here's something I've been doing on my farm. So I got a uh, Licking branch tree right there on the edge of this food plot, and I'm up maybe 10 feet up in the air. I'm using my tethered tree saddle to support me, and I'm hanging these cameras up high, and I'm focusing them down, and these deer will not see it. Otherwise, I know they're becoming camera shy to the camera. So I started to get these up, and these little mounts have been uh, fantastic to use, and I'm doing that all over my farm. Okay, well this is the, uh, I call it the Taj Mahal plot. And uh, this is the first year on this. Um, no till, all I did is sprayed this twice and I broadcast the uh, Vitalize. And you can see the results here. It's looking really good. Um, it's about three quarters of an acre in size. Um, this is typically sandy soil. Uh, we didn't get a much rain this fall. So I just waited till I could try to time a rain event. And then I put um, two and a half gallons 
of deer grow on here because my pH is about 5.5 on this. So two and a half gallons should bring it up close to seven and it did really good. I'll get it down on a close look on it, but it's looking fantastic. Okay, well you can see what we got going on here. There's some browse activity. Uh, we got hairy vetch, we got brassicas, we got rye, uh, we got clover down in there. I can see some clover down here. Um, it's looking really good. And this is just a really a remote plot for me. I can't get much equipment in here at all. I did get my tractor in here today because the trails were dry, but normally I'm doing everything in this with a backpack sprayer and a spreader and that's it. So this plot is just a great example of it doesn't take a lot of equipment. First year, it's gonna get better and better as the soil improves, uh, get some organic material in here, and uh, the spring of this will be nitro boost, so we're just gonna keep doing that rotation. I did put down um, 100 pounds of nitrogen on this plot just to give it a boost because it was kind of lagging behind a little bit. So I did give it a little nitrogen on this one, but in the spring with the nitro boost, get my natural nitrogen from the sky I'm not gonna to have to do that so one thing that I've started to learn uh, about this uh, vitalized seed mix is that um, if I don't disturb the soil at all and I just broadcast into this thatch and it works its way down I didn't get the take on the larger seeds like the peas and beans as much as if I would have tilled the soil but I don't want to till the soil I want to leave it you know alone so this biology the worms, the nematodes, the mycorrhizal fungi, all these root networks start to work together. So I don't want to uh, break this soil. If I come in here with a disc and I maybe just kind of like bounce the disc across the surface, minimally disturb it, just enough to get a little bit of, of soil showing, but not enough to, to break it into like a clean tilled uh, dirt field. If I just scarred up and I broadcast it in, and then I take the Packer Max HD and I rolled across it, that's what I did here. And it seems to be working really well. So I think there's this balance between the guys that have historically, you know, turned over their soil, fluffed it up, brought oxygen into it, killed all those networks of fungi, the bacteria, exposed it to the heat and the sun and the rain, and got, you know, the erosion, all those negative things when it comes to soil. Um, yeah, they get great they get great food plots, but they got to keep feeding the soil with nitrogen. I got this field here with zero nitrogen. What you saw, I didn't put anything on it. And I, I, I think I maybe put 100 pounds on my entire farm. And I only put it on one field because I'm just trying to get it going. Um, so this is without nitrogen, without inputs. It's looking good. And I'll give you these frequent updates. And if you're looking for the seed and you'd like to talk to me about the vitalized seed process, how I'm doing it on my farm, I'm learning as I go. I don't know everything, but it seems to be working. Then give me a call. Uh, right now, I'm taking some pre-orders, I guess. I'm lining up my clients with how much seed that they're going to want. So if you want to get on the list for Nitro Boost, which is the spring, then give me a call. I'll get you on the list, and when I make my order, I'll order you some. I'm Neil Hogger, and I'm a land specialist with Whitetail Properties Real Estate in Western Wisconsin on my farm in Indian Creek talking about vitalized seed. Thanks for watching.